Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and due to popular demand, I am getting rid of my Raspberry Pi in favor of Apple Pi. No, just kidding. Anyway, we are going to be running Mac OS 9 on our Raspberry Pi. So let's get started. Now, if you guys follow me on social media, which is my Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook, you probably know this video is coming because I always end up taking photos of what I'm doing and then uploading to those sites. So before we get started, I am going to explain a little bit of the software that we're using. Now, I really didn't go in depth on the last video as far as running Mac OS 7. So there are actually four applications that could run Mac OS, actually five applications that could run Mac OS on our uh, Raspberry Pis or uh, do the emulation for you. One, which is mini VMAC, which is the software that we were using on my last video. Next one, we have something called the Bazelus 2. I don't know if I'm saying that correct. That could run emulation from 7.5 all the way up until 8.1. Then the next version up is the Sheep Shaver, which you could run all the way up until 9.04. And then you have PeerPC, which could run Mac OS 10. Now I've tried all the versions, including Peer. PC and I could actually run Mac 10 on my Raspberry Pi, but it's so slow, so slow. So on today's video, we are gonna be running Sheep Shaver, which will be able to get our Mac OS all the way up until 9.04. Now I have everything all compiled and saved into a folder. Now, uh, first you're gonna to need to download the software, which is Sheep Shaver from my website. I'm gonna leave a link to my blog, which have all the links to everything else that we're talking about. And once you download Sheep Shaver, one of the repositories that we need for our our Raspberry Pi would be um, the SDL. So to get that is sudo apt-get install libsdl 1.2 Debian. That's the version that we need to install. Now I have it installed already, but you need to install that just to get the software to run. All right, let me clear this screen. Okay, next up, we need a ROM file. Now, to get the ROM file, you could actually Google search redundant robot sheep shaver, or I'll leave, like I said, I'll leave all the links in my blog. Here, you need to download the New World PPC ROM. That's the one that works best with sheep shaver. And once you download that, which I already did, unzip it, and then name it Mac OS ROM, exactly how it's spelled like this, with the caps and everything, no periods, it's just Mac OS ROM. Now, as soon as that's all done, we're gonna run the software itself. Now, I can actually just run it from this prompt. Okay, first thing we need to do is to create a hard drive. So here we're gonna hit create, and we are gonna go create a new folder. Um, we're gonna put down a size, and I'm gonna put down 200 megabytes. I don't know why I stick with that. And I'm gonna name this disk. Once you hit okay, give it a few minutes, it's gonna create a file called disk. Now it's added that. Next, we need to add an installer. Now to get all the operating systems, I actually you could actually go to the website I showed you before, which is called Mac Repository, or I found another site called World Win World PC. And I, I actually been enjoying this website a lot because look at the software that you could get: Windows 1.0, Windows 3.0, Windows 95. Uh, but we're mainly interested in Mac OS now head over to Mac OS 9 because that's what we're gonna be installing. You can install eight if you want, but I'm just gonna install nine. And I'm downloading the 9.0.4 iOS. Now it's gonna be 300 something megabytes. I already downloaded it, but I'm just showing you the location where you could get it. Um, for this particular software, you can't do 9.1 or 9.2, but if you wanna play around with um, Peer PC, which I also have compiled for the Mac, you could get the nine versions up and you could get the 10 versions up, I believe. So. After you downloaded that file, I actually extracted it and named it 9.IS. So it just makes it easier for me because it has a long, weird name. I'm going to add that CD-ROM, 9.ISO, hit OK. And then I want to boot from CD-ROM. I'm going to go through graphics and sounds. If you want a particular resolution, you could change it here. Keyboard and mouse, you don't have to change. Memory is where we need to change. In here, you need to change it to... 256. It's going to say default 16. You need a minimum of 32 to even install 9. And since we have RAM, might as well just give it 256. You don't have to insert the ROM file because it's in the same folder, but if you want to, you could actually just select the ROM. All right, now that it's booted from the CD-ROM, it's going to tell you to install it. And I'm just going to name this disk Mac. 
initialize, continue, it will erase all the information off the disk, and now it boots up. First thing you're going to be able to do is install the Mac OS. So I'm just going to, it's going to pop up the CD-ROM anyway, so I'm going to hit install Mac OS 9, continue, select the hard drive, continue, continue, agree, oh god. Okay, here you could actually customize options here if you don't want anything or if you want stuff. Um, it's really up to you what you want to do. There's options here that you could update hard drives or create installation report. I don't really need to create installation report, but I will update the Apple drivers. Start. It's pretty straightforward. Um, goes right through the installation, takes about 11 minutes. And this is actually accurate. Uh, for some odd reason, I was playing around with the same installation on my ASUS Tinkerboard. And the ASUS Tinkerboard is slightly faster and the installation was seven minutes versus the 11 minutes here. So we're just gonna let this go. So guys, now that everything is installed and it started, a couple of things that you could do with this, obviously a lot of it has changed. And I also changed the background and stuff like that. I could just change the thousands of colors if you want uh, the, the better graphics and everything. Um, what, one thing about Cheap Shaver that I really do enjoy or like is that it actually could read from your root file system. So basically this could go into my folder called Unix um, I could scroll down to, let me make this a little bit bigger. I could scroll down to home, go to Pi, and head over to my folder, which is um, Mac 9X right here. And you can see all the files here. Basically, I don't have to transfer stuff to the installation, and I don't need to have a ginormous hard drive because I could just extract and do whatever I want on the physical drive. So here I have actually SimCity 2000, and... Yeah, it basically plays this like I would playing on the uh, Mac 7. To quit Cheap Shaver, you could either go to Special and shut down, or you could hit Control Escape, and that will actually close the program itself. So to safely shut down, I would actually go to the shutdown menu. The internet does and doesn't work. You do need to compile a driver. Again, I'm not too worried about the internet because I'd rather use it for my host system than use it on the Sheep Shaver. Besides, it gives you Internet Explorer, what, five? What am I gonna, what am I gonna use that with? Okay, um, here, I'm gonna start up this app again. And this is where you could change the location of what I was just talking about, which is the Unix root. You could actually change it to home slash pi and every time it starts up, it'll actually go to that folder itself instead of having to navigate through all the stuff. Uh, it's a decent pace on this emulator. Uh, I wouldn't say it's great. It does run some of the apps. It does run some of the games. It ran SimCity fine. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on running Mac OS 9 on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, I will include all the software. I actually compiled this version, Sheep Shaver, onto Raspberry Pi and also compiled Pair PC, which you can run OS X 10 on Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to show you the installation because that actually is much slower. Maybe you guys could tweak it and play with it and maybe get a little bit better at speed out of it. If you guys have any questions about this video hit it in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this video please hit that like button if you want to watch my previous video hit the link to the right if you want to watch what youtube tells you hit the link to the left and if you haven't done so already hit that little circle button in the middle to subscribe to this channel and as i say in my nerd cave hack till it hurts